Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Mustard Seed episode 22. Uh, we are doing this via La Zoom. La Zoom. We're adapting. We're adapting to our circumstances. We are. Um, so bear with us. Uh, it looks nice. Looks like it's going to go good, but uh, you never know. We are <laughs> we'll see. To come and uh, could strike out just like Carlos Beltran staring at that last pitch. <laughs> We we don't want our knees to buckle here. Nope. No. So uh, let's uh, talk about Nicodemus. Nicodemus. The Nicodemus. He was um, very well respected in the Jewish community. He was. Um, what was, was he a, a rabbi or he was? Uh, yeah. Right. And well, they call him a Pharisee, right? So he was the leader. Uh, he was a ruler of the Jews. Like their religious group. He was very well respected uh, with his uh, knowledge and ruling. But, um, you know, back fresh when Jesus hit the scene, you know, they were scared. A lot of the rabbis and Pharisees and all them were scared. And you know, rightfully so, because, you know, the truth was coming. And, exactly. Uh, it was, it's a lot different than what they were used to yeah. being taught and hearing. It was radical. Yep. So um, they threw a lot of questions at Jesus to try to, like, make him stumble and, you know, throw him off his game. But Essentially, uh, right, like, the Pharisees were the ones that really drove Jesus to get crucified. Like, they really pushed him in front of the Romans. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, because um, what's-his-name probably would have not done it if uh, – because, like, he even said this man has done nothing, but they were pushing it hard. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and what's his name? Uh, Nicodemus comes. He finds Jesus. Uh, he wanted to talk to him, but he couldn't be seen talking to him because he held a, he was held in high regard, and that would probably be frowned upon, and he probably would lose value to his, uh, his word. Definitely. Yeah. To – he was risking a lot to spend time with Jesus and to talk to him like he did, which is mentioned here in, in uh, John's gospel, chapter three. Yeah, and uh, I believe you said he's mentioned a couple times. Uh, he also shows up at the funeral. Yeah, it's funny because like we're talking about that, how like here's the story about Nicodemus, you know, talking to Jesus and questioning him and kind of getting you know, a preview of what Jesus's mission is and why he's here. And then you don't really hear about him again. But he comes up at the end of John's gospel. We noted, we saw that he was there when they buried Jesus. He brought um, some myrrh and aloes. So value, right? I believe that that was something that was considered expensive. Yeah, I'm not sure like, about the aloe. Um, <laughs> but uh, myrrh, of course, yeah, worth something back, you know, like what the wise the wise men brought stuff to you know like the, that stuff was uh very hard to get for a poor person exactly right like i guess that was one Probably of the considerations money because yeah. you just you know the preaching hobo to people <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that's something that you're given in high regard so it kind of i guess ties like a knot on this interaction because for me reading that that makes me think that what jesus spoke to him about here in john in the beginning of john's gospel then like connected with him that he felt the desire to go and find jesus after he was buried mm -hmm. so this this story because when we were talking about doing nicodemus and, and understanding who he is as a pharisee and everything in this conversation with jesus is where john three sixteen comes from and that's such a well-known um you know, Bible verse that you see it on eye black. I think you know, it's like, the first uh, time it was said. Exactly. And this Nicodemus kind of creates the story, the backstory to where Jesus kind of ends up explaining, you know, what his mission is. And it's the idea that um, Jesus was talking about how he was coming. Um, Unless someone is born and new, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So he was talking about the kingdom of heaven and understanding like what the spirit was versus the flesh and nicodemus was having a really tough time like understanding you yeah. know what jesus was speaking about and, and that was the night like because nicodemus so we're jumping a little 
around on all of Nicodemus. Like we went to the funeral, we went here, but the whole um, way Nicodemus, like he wanted to meet with Jesus, and like in the beginning he was, you know, scared to because he didn't want to lose his power and what he had. So he met him by chance at night, like through the star light and moonlight, like he, uh, I guess, came across Jesus who was praying on a bench. And that's where the whole um, born again was told to him and John 3.16 and all that. And uh, Nicodemus had a hard time understanding um, the baby quote. Like he couldn't wrap his head and it kind of got stuck. And Jesus was like really trying to explain it. Like you, he kept, Nicodemus kept saying, um, I can't become a baby again. <laughs> like, no, like you have to be born again, like through water and baptism, especially, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Holy trying to explain, trying to explain. I think he walked away understanding. Uh, obviously, Jesus uh, reached him because he showed up uh, when he passed. Of course. Yeah. And the biggest thing, again, it was. And this is what Jesus does throughout the whole gospel is like he's challenging what is being taught now. Like the Pharisees were the front and the face of religion and the decisions and the rituals and all their practices. And Jesus was challenging that and him saying that now I'm here for you to be, you know, born again with the spirit. They couldn't understand that. And he was like, if I and that's where the flesh of the flesh and the spirit comes where he's like, even if I spoke to you about flesh, you would still challenge me. So now he's like talking about the spirit and explaining like, this is the Holy Spirit and us kind of being filled with the Holy Spirit is how that, the, kind of the whole born anew kind of, I guess, comes from, it seems. And there's and um, another powerful, I'm jumping away from Nicodemus a little bit from, I'm going to the chosen in season two, like, they're in a small town and um, John the Baptist just gets arrested. And Jesus like grabs a bunch of disciples, he grabs like Matthew, Peter, he goes, you guys have to see this. So he goes to a temple. And I think it was the Sabbath. So you couldn't like perform Do like doctors. You couldn't eat. You couldn't do any of that. Jesus walks in with the disciples. It was like walking in, owning the place. And he looks at a man whose hands all paralyzed. And he goes, what's wrong? And the guy tells him, like, his hand's paralyzed. And the rabbis are just like, it's just paralyzed. You can't do anything. It's the Sabbath. He's fine. He's fine. And the guy's, like, looking at him, like, I'm fine. I can't move my arm. It's paralyzed. And Jesus, like, grabs his hand, heals it, and then looks at them just, like, and then walks away. Just, like, it was just a very powerful moment of, like, my time's now and I'm going to show them the right way. And the way you're doing it is stuck in the past and it's time for you guys to follow me. Of course. That and that's exactly him like challenging what was initially understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's kind of like what I feel like we face now. Like we were talking about that a little bit before, like how does the story like Nicodemus relate to, to us? And like with that, you know idea like you said with jesus coming in and doing something that was different and challenging the pharisees and doing a having a miracle on the sabbath and then talking about you know being born again with the spirit and not necessarily understanding it like nicodemus not necessarily understanding it like how many times do we find ourselves in situations where it's like all right we're being asked to do a certain thing because we know that that's the right thing to do with our faith yet like we shy away or like say, well, this is not exactly like what the popular thing is to be done. But I know that I should be doing something, a different type of thing. And that's like a challenge that Nicodemus faced and that like we definitely face now. And, and that's um, one thing Nicodemus definitely did uh, face was um, not wanting to. He wasn't ready to give up his earthly possessions. Wasn't it ready to do all that? And exactly. yeah. I would like to think I'd be the one like Peter jumping in, cutting off a guy's ear to be like, oh, yeah. you never know at that time, like how it was, how it would be presented to you. If it came to you now, like you of course want to believe, like you would drop everything and just do it. But like, it's hard. My favorite part about all of this and how like I kind of connected to it, like 
So when we're asked to follow Jesus and challenged to kind of be born again and live our life through the Spirit, it's summed up and kind of like Jesus, John 3.16 is like his proof why we should follow him. Like that line is him basically saying, this is why you should follow me because God so loved the world that he gave his only son for whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So he's saying, my God loves us so much, gave us his son. So let's, if you follow me, you'll have eternal life. My favorite part from it and how I feel like I connect with it sometimes is the part right after it, where he's talking about that God sent his son, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Mm. And Jesus tells Nicodemus that he's not here to condemn but to save. save. And that connects like I connect with that so much because how many times am I like hesitant to go deeper in my faith because I'm thinking like I'm gonna be condemned for all the things that I'm doing wrong. But more it's the opposite where Jesus is inviting us and saying, I'm here to save the world, you know, through me. So live with me and learn from me and do as I did and you'll be saved, not condemned. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that's the piece that I love. And that, if I was Nicodemus in that moment, like, that's what would connect with me. So it's, it's a cool thought in that way. And Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for these stories of Nicodemus. We ask that you give us the power, the people on the other side of the screen, the power, if we are presented with an opportunity to follow you and preach for you and just spread the good word that we do it. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this night. We thank you for this technology of this Zoom call. Lord, we thank you for letting us get together. We thank you for making it possible that we can continue this week. Um, Please bless everybody going forward this week and uh, allow everyone to have a good um, week and good Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So uh, <clears throat> check us out. Twitter, Facebook, um, blog. Website. We got Oops, a couple blogs that came out, some good ones. Uh, Ryan wrote one uh, talking about what we're going to be doing going forward. Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a Yankees reaction that I haven't posted yet that I think I might. I'm still crying. I haven't wiped away all my tears yet, but I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll post something. We have some bonus material coming out and uh, a bunch of other stuff, and we're going to be doing uh, different content coming forward. Uh, let us know in the comments if you want us to talk about anything. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. Peace.